game will ever be the same, same. Gonna turn up the game, we gon' turn up the game, game, change. Gonna turn up the game, we gon' turn up the game, game, change. Gonna turn up the game, we gon' turn up the game, game, change. Gonna turn up the game, we gon' turn up the game, game, change. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever or whenever you're finding us, I'm so happy you made it here tonight. I'm Shavonna Lees, and welcome to Game Changers Podcast, your go-to entrepreneurial mindset source for true content that really shows what it's like to be a kingdom entrepreneur. So we help first-generation entrepreneurs cut through the fluff of what it means to be an entrepreneur in this day and age. If you're like me, I grew up in a middle class home. My parents believed educate yourself, work hard, get a good job, buy a home, and that's about it. But we have seen such a shift in this season where people are finally stepping out on faith into entrepreneurship. They're chasing their freedom, chasing their dreams and their purpose. And as exciting as it is, there are lots of challenges when it comes to that. So I created this space for us to have real conversations from entrepreneurs like myself and other culture curators in the city to really share how they overcome challenges that are associated with being an entrepreneur. And most importantly, what motivates us all to keep going on the right track? Now, when I say kingdom entrepreneurship, there may be someone out there that says, "Uh uh-uh, I ain't with the religion, I don't do the church, and trust me when I tell you, I feel you. I feel you. I grew up in a church, and personally, it always rubbed me the wrong way. It felt like a a dance, it felt phony, it felt fear-based, it felt like... Somebody wasn't telling the whole story. So even though I grew up in a church, when I finally did leave home at 18, I remember specifically telling my mama, I'm never stepping foot in church again. And for the next six years, there was no God in my life. And that was a hell. (laughs) That was a hell that I didn't even know existed. Talk about anxiety, doing everything out of my own strength, only being able to see my future as far as the next day or my next meal. It was ghetto. And I had to hit a few rock bottoms to even get to the point where I was able to surrender to God and say, you know what? What I really want is to know who I am in your kingdom. I want to see me through your eyes. I really want to be able to help people and impact people. I really want to be able to wake up every day and do something that I love and make money doing it. Show me. And fast forward, six years later, here we go. That's kingdom. It doesn't have to involve damnation, fear. It's just you and God. And doing what he called us all here to do while we have time on this earth. So another backstory, outside of this, I do mindset coaching. So like I said, I help first generation entrepreneurs really get out of their own way and get out of their head into the game. Today, I had a really um, difficult conversation um, And it was with someone that was really struggling with self-doubt. And that's a place that I've been. That's a place that you may be right now. And it's really uncomfortable and deterring when you know that your heart is pure. You know that your product or your skill is good. It's better than half of the things you see. And you're just not seeing a return on it. You're not getting the, the audience you want, the inf- influence you want. 
the money you want, and you see people who are doing less and getting more. And this person, this conversation was extra discouraging because they were to the point where not only were they questioning their own gifts and their purpose, but they were even questioning God. Like, how many times have we gotten to a point where it's like, God, are you, are you sure? God, is this it? Is this what I sacrificed for? Is this what I'm grinding for? It's not cutting it. And it brought me to a real reality of sometimes we do have to have those hard conversations with ourselves and even with our creator to get on the other side of things. He already knows your heart. There's no point in faking the funk. So I wanted to share with you guys some ways that I've been able to overcome those days when I felt that type of doubt and how I was able to put my best foot forward. So the first thing is authentic relationship with our creator. I don't care who you call him. If you know him, you know him. And like anybody else, you can have real conversations with your friends, right? Or your family or your father, your Lord. Start there. A lot of times we're afraid to be honest and be, be vulnerable and be messy with God. Especially when it comes to something as precious as our purpose, our passions. God, I'm seeking understanding right now. I don't know why I've done all I can do. I don't know why I put my last dollar into these ads and I haven't seen a return. I don't know why I'm doing my best work and my clients are just not coming back. Whatever it is, seek God's understanding because we have to remember his ways are not our ways. So, it's not always going to make sense to us. Actually, most of the time, it's not going to make sense to us. But when we ask him to give us that clarity, that understanding, and also peace to accept his will, it changes the game and it, it powers up our, our momentum. And it gives us that, that win to keep on going. It's been so many times where in hindsight, when I almost gave up, when I almost quit, and I just pushed this a little bit more, breakthrough was right there. And sometimes, he's just testing our wills. He just want to know, are you still going to go hard? Are you still going to have integrity, even when you don't get your way? Because, you know, sometimes we be trying to treat God like our sugar daddy. Like, I'm going to do this for you if you do this for me by this time. And it just don't work like that. It really don't. Because we definitely need him more than he needs us. So we don't have no leverage. It's got to be from the heart. Another thing that helps me keep going is Remembering where I came from. Remembering where I came from. I've worked so hard to be a positive light to my son, to myself, to be able to experience life fully, to be able to love. I remember when there were days that I was struggling with addiction, of alcohol, pills, weed, anything, sex. Yeah. I remember days when I was suffering through manic depression. I remember days my son, he was maybe two or three years old, he would see me in the room spazzing 
screaming because I was losing my freaking mind, literally. I remember times when I was in relationships where there was mental abuse, manipulation, physical abuse, and that was my normal. There was always something bad happening. I was always losing something. That was my normal, yo. So for me to get to a place where I can wake up and be comfortable, where I can wake up with a light heart, that in itself is a blessing. And I think a lot of times when we get comfortable, we forget where we used to be. And we forget that God works wonders in the mundane things. Instead of always asking for him to perform for us, can we just sit with ourselves and sit in his presence and thank God for the peace that we have? Is that not enough for you to trust that he can bring all things that you desire? Whenever I sit down and reflect on those moments, it's definitely a reality check. Because I know if he could clean up the mess that was me, <laughs> any project that I'm working on, it's like small potatoes. It's just a matter of me remembering to trust him with everything and going hard in the, in the interim. Before we get what we want, you got to go hard. Another thing that keeps me from doubting myself and giving up, sometimes you just need a change of environment. Sometimes the reality is we're holding ourselves back with our mentality. And the tricky thing about a mentality is you don't know that you have a, a negative mentality or that your mentality is no longer serving you until you step outside of it and see something different at work and see how easy, how much smoother things can be. So when it, whenever I'm feeling stuck and groggy, sometimes I just like, go to a different neighborhood. Like, we're here in Miami. Um, I live in Miami Lakes. But sometimes when I'm feeling like, eh, I'll go to, you know, Ball Harbor or something and just go shopping there just to be around a different energy and see how people move differently. Or even if it comes to, you know, the type of content that I'm digesting, either watching a movie, social media, reading a book, sometimes I just switch it up. And just do something different that's geared towards, you know, productivity rather than entertainment. Because we're so heavily influenced by our environment. We're so heavily influenced by the people that we surround ourselves with. The conversations that we have. Sometimes we just got to switch it up and do a refresh so that we can level up and begin to gain a new perspective on the same issue. One of my favorite sayings is there is a thousand ways to skin a cat. I don't even know if that's a real saying, but that's my saying. Because I don't look at anything as just being one-dimensional. Don't box yourself in. Don't be set in your own ways. There is a solution to every single problem, and there's more than one. Whether you are going to commit to find that solution or not, it's completely up to you. But is it possible? Absolutely. So when I'm doubting myself, I think about all the people who overcame anyway. And I say, there's nothing that anyone else can do that I don't believe I can do. So we're going to figure this out, and we're going to keep the party going. Doubt is one of the enemy's favorite tricks. 
literally. Doubt takes over your mind, your heart, and your spirit in such a way that it can single-handedly kill your dream and your vision. Because if we don't believe in something, we're not going to do the work. We're not going to speak faith into it. We're not going to take any steps toward making it happen. And if we don't do that, we're dead. One thing that is a lot more powerful than we give credit to, and I recently realized, is words especially words that are powered with belief and intention. And when you don't really like believe in something, you ever notice how you talk about it like it's little? Like, oh yeah, I'm working on this little project, you know? That's, that's the doubt talking. That's you speaking with a protective layer just in case somebody try to come at you and you don't think you can defend what you're working on you make it small. It's not small. We have to speak life into everything connected to us. Because it starts with us. It starts right here. And everything else that it grows into is powered from you. Doubt eats that away, and it's like the core of our being, the core of our businesses, the core of belief. And doubt is also a liar. Doubt is a liar. Because for every 10 reasons you have why something won't work, there's 20 reasons why it would. So it really comes back to your choice. Are you deciding to go this way or that way? For me, when I'm able to reflect on how far God has brought me and how he's transformed me as a person, let alone my life, my business, that keeps me on the right track. When I'm confused and I don't have understanding, I don't have peace in a difficult season, when I seek understanding from God and he answers me with such clarity, and gives me peace to accept it, that gives me the strength to keep going. Y'all got to remember, man, when we say entrepreneurial mindset, it's so important because this game is spiritual. Think about what we're doing here, especially those of you who are the very first person in your family to ever be self-made, create an organization or business or brand, that thing is spiritual. No one in your family has ever done it. No one in your family can really encourage you to the degree that you need to be encouraged. No one in your family can tell you, all right, these, these are the steps you need to take. So it really ain't nobody but you and God. And it is our role to build that belief internally and build that structure and that organization externally off of that belief alone. It's not an easy job. And that's why I created spaces like this because community is so important. It's so important for for those that are committed to learning, for those that know certain things, to share that information and create a collective community that's geared towards really breaking through this and creating legacy for the next generation to come. My son isn't going to have to go through what I had to go through to get here because of the groundwork that we're laying down today. And that's what I want for you guys as well. But you gotta want it yourself. So when that doubt starts creeping up, remember, it is bigger than your will. It's his will. And everything good 
and everything glorious is going to come with a fight. So you got to be ready to do that. And we're ready to support you. That's all we got, y'all. It's been real. Oh, I appreciate you guys so, so much for viewing us every week. We appreciate the support. And again, special shout out to our sponsors here at Boss Nation Network. For those of you guys who don't know what Boss Nation Network is, because I know we say it all the time, this is a network of kingdom entrepreneurs in real life. We have such a diverse group of entrepreneurs, and we generally support each other. We come together, we do fashion shows, we host podcasts, whatever your business needs support, this is your collective entrepreneurial community to give you that in real life. So if you guys have not downloaded the app, it is available for iOS and Android. Make sure you check that out or at least connect with us on Instagram at Boss Models. All right, that's all. Good night, guys.